Good morning, Antonio. How are you? Good morning, Yungwo. I'm great. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for accepting the interview, especially on Sunday morning today. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Um, hello, everyone. So uh, here today I have interviewed with Antonio, um, who I used to work together in the former office, and he's an MEP engineer. And actually, he's a mechatronic, so he has a lot of um, other uh, background uh, knowledge in terms of me mechanical robotics and also some electronic um, um, the knowledge related to robotics but today I think he will talk more about building system so hi Antonio um, could you introduce yourself hi everyone my name is Antonio Nikolic uh, and I'm from Croatia Zagreb uh, I have a bachelor degree in me mechatronics and currently I'm finishing uh, my master's degree in BIM management and digital delivery uh, at Middlesex University in London. Uh, I'm doing the distance learning so I can both work and learn new things about <laughs> BIM. That's clever. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very flexible, so it works for me. And I, uh, as for my career, I'm currently working as a BIM manager in Croatia for the firm uh, ATP Architects and Engineers. Uh, it's an integrated office with architectural, structural, MIP, cost estimation and site supervision disciplines. And I think this uh, really helps me with my studies about BIM and BIM in particular, because uh, I have I have opportunity to work in uh, with many disciplines at the same place. Wow, that's great. Antonio, um, as far as I know, mechatronics, it's about to um, build a robot. Could you explain a little bit about mechatronics? Well, well, yeah, yeah, it's about robotics, uh, automation. Uh, it's uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, uh, study about mechanics, electronics, and informatics uh, combined together, just like uh, the BIM is trying to uh, make connection with architects, MIP engineers, structural engineers. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was interested also in BIM mm -hmm. uh, as I was in mechatronics yeah, in order to combine them all into one great product. Wow, interesting because Croatia surprisingly very strong at this uh, electronic and mechanical engineering. When you think of uh, Nikola Tesla or Serbi, I know it's yeah. Serb Serbian background, but born in Croatia. <laughs> and also yeah. Uh, yeah. remark for this uh, genius uh, electronic car uh, engineer, right? Yes, Rimac is one of the one of the highlights of Croatia electronics industry. Yeah. I think yeah. um, so for, for me, uh, you would have lo lots of like um, opportunities in me perhaps mechanical or robotics or automobile industry in Croatia. How come you turn into building industry? What makes you um, getting, getting, what makes you the um, experience in building um, domain as a beam manager? Well, as a part of mechatronics, uh, mechanical is also my one of my disciplines. And uh, in building industry, you have uh, you have the whole uh, whole uh, whole you can you can integrate whole mechanics and electronics both into one building. And uh, for for the part of automa automa automation, you can uh, you can make smart buildings, smart cities. Mm -hmm. etc mm -hmm. so that's why i wanted to to take the challenge and uh, not go uh in the standard flow if mm -hmm. you can call that mm -hmm. um as going into robotics industry or uh, automatics industry i wanted to do something else with mm -hmm. my skills and mm -hmm. try to uh, do the automation on building industry Wow, that's very interesting. It's well, yeah. I think you are the first uh, participants for, of the interview as a MEP engineer. So I think we, I have a couple of different questions in comparison to previous uh, 
interview because the previous three I had interviewed with civil engineer or architect or structural engineer, but today is MEP part. That's very interesting. So now um, I would like to ask you, what is your favorite software or if you programming something and why you think what that's the best software for you or what language is the best for you? Well, uh, I started with Rabbit. So for now, Rabbit is my, uh, you can call it favorite software, mm -hmm. but um, I know there are many more softwares uh, which, uh, which are cheaper maybe mm -hmm. than Rabbit. But mm -hmm. for now, Rabbit has many options to do uh, MIP. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it needs uh, development also, but uh, for now, it's it's going in a good way mm -hmm. uh, as for programming i i uh, i do c language mm -hmm. but i have a little bit uh insight in python mm -hmm. um, i tried um, ibm watson api that is uh, artificial artificial intelligence mm -hmm. uh, platform and uh, i did a little bit of sql databases and so on mm -hmm. so yeah I, I i have uh i can say that i have a little bit of knowledge in both mm -hmm. programming and in doing software like rabbit solidworks wow that's great but rabbit has a lot of uh plugins or extra software that you can integrate um, in terms of analysis of a system design or performance of building. Do you have any fa uh, like uh, favorite software from plugin side? Well, uh, I find MagicCAD, for example, very useful mm -hmm. because you have also from, uh, you have a whole spectrum for MIP and schematics and they have their own uh, family database. So mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about content uh, and how to make a database by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I, I would say for now, uh, Ma MagicCAD for me is one of the better mm -hmm. uh, plugins for Revit. Mm -hmm. And 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 MagicCAD offers you all MEP calculation at the same time, isn't it? Yes, yes, okay. yes. That's correct. And uh, real time collision proofing mm -hmm. and etc. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it yeah. has some quite interesting options. Mm -hmm. Like opening management and etc. Yes. That's interesting. All right. Um, then um, I'm sure it's not easy to collaborate with the other disciplines um, in general, not only BIM workflow, but you are BIM manager and you know uh, probably the difficulties uh, of collaboration. I know we are still working in a modern method of uh, uh, building the, like our planning, but what is the most difficult part for you when you collaborate with other disciplines? For me, because I'm a, on this uh, role that needs to uh, connect architects and MIP and structural, mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the problems is communication between the disciplines mm -hmm. and uh, respect for other disciplines, mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes you get the feeling that uh, one of the disciplines thinks it's better for them uh, to do it like, like uh, in their way, but oh. they do not. <laughs> they do not uh, the see the problems for from other disciplines, and yeah. they just need to uh, sit together and mm -hmm. work it out and uh, see what is the best solution. Mm -hmm. And I think the beam is one of the processes and tools that can uh, overcome these difficulties, mm -hmm. and maybe i uh you can call it they sometimes don't see a bigger picture mm -hmm. than their own discipline yeah right yeah. but um generally speaking mep part is involving the project a little bit later phase let's say schematic design is being done yeah. by architect and uh, structural engineers and then during maybe design and development uh, phase, uh, the mostly, um, or a little bit earlier than design and development phase, that the architect or structural engineer start to ask MEP engineer to be involved. 
do you have always similar scenario or do you are you you guys also involved in early stage altogether like a lean con construction method with beam or, and do you think which one is better or i mean well in my in, in my opinion uh, the all of the all sides should be in the project from the very beginning mm -hmm. in order to make quality decisions, mm -hmm. uh, good decisions uh, to avoid later pro problems. Mm -hmm. So I think all the disciplines, uh, not only design disciplines, also operational and mm -hmm. maintenance and uh, investor side mm -hmm. should be on the project from very beginning in order to know each other and know the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they can foresee the problems that could be uh, uh, arise later. And in, in that way, they could, uh, they could save on costs and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it, it, they should be from the, uh, you can call it concept stage, mm -hmm. they should be involved, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. But still, we are stick on traditional yeah. planning yeah. stages, let's say stage, phase, like concept design and, you know, uh, maybe must start from master plan, schematic and feasibility study, schematic design, and then design development, and uh, working drawing and construction drawing, coordination drawing, and all these phases. I think probably it's better we completely ignore this phase uh, of tradition and everybody improved from the scratch until the end and as well as the op I mean, operation time. So it's like, because we have now common platform, common data environment where everybody can jump together. So. I think your 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 comments is actually makes more sense. Um, what is the difficulty when you jump in middle of project? Let's say after concept design is all done, and then you got you get the brief from um, architects or structural engineer. Maybe you start to populate like scheme the MEP system, and then start to populate the openings to talk with structural engineer. What is difficult uh, situation when you jump in the middle project? Well, first of all, you need to catch up to the project. You, uh, you need to know the project uh, mm -hmm. to get to know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, uh, when you start to do schemes and uh, uh, basic, uh, basic systems, mm -hmm. uh, if they didn't foresee the problems that could arise, uh, there, then, then there is a rework needs to be done, and mm -hmm. it just costs time and money to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of uh, going in the project in the later phases, mm -hmm. I think it's really better to do it from mm -hmm. from the beginning mm -hmm. in order to avoid these mistakes mm -hmm. or reworks and save the money and raise the quality of the product that we That's are right. delivering. Most of case, because architects and structural engineer during schematic design, we don't really propose volume strategy for MEP spaces. So yeah. maybe when, you, when MEP engineers receive the model or like drawing from conceptual stage, the whole system should be positioned in completely different location or yeah. I don't know, the system <laughs> shop. The... Yeah. Yeah, or, or we need more space. That's yeah. the most common, common the, problem. Yeah, suspended yeah. ceilings or all the shaft way yeah. probably doesn't make any sense from, maybe we know a little bit, so maybe makes a little bit sense, but for you maybe struggling, so you have to provide another scheme, then it's a, a lot of uh, rework. Rework, yeah. This, this yeah. is the big problem in our industry. I think in the beginning, um, if everybody involved in workshop uh, before you know, really start to plan something um, in kick off meeting and start to do some couple of days of workshop to discuss a uh, common uh, issue area, then I think this is the best um, sort of um, scenario where we can work efficiently. But yes, and uh, in those workshops, um, sometimes I get the feeling that project leaders are. Mm. Um, uh, one, uh, they want to separate BIM from mm. from their disciplines, yeah. and then I think that is not good because BIM is just a tool and process 
to mm. help the discipl other dip disciplines to colla collaborate and to put a good quality product. Mm. Uh, so I think um, that workshop should be one workshop with all the parties involved mm -hmm. and also the BIM or someone who is responsible for BIM part uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in order to guide them and uh, to show them uh, which way it should be done mm -hmm. uh, from that side. Yeah, sure. This is like depends on also project management side and also depending on many companies. But I think, um, yeah, the another difficulty is when we do competition, let's say, then many competition brief, uh, it's actually MEP part is kind of uh, minimalized, like sort of. Yeah. So the most of case, we just planning the areas and room rooms. And then based on that, we can just uh, submit competition entry. And um, perhaps there is second phase of second or third phase of competition entry. But generally speaking, MEP part is kind of ignored uh, from the brief. More, yeah. more or less. I, it's a, main, a lot of case now changing because the government realized it and also private sectors, they demand the BIM submission from the competition also. So I found it's, um, it's, it's better and better. But I think uh, absolutely right. The 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 kick off meeting or workshop stage, um, beam must be involved. Um, yes, yes, and they need to decide which kind of project uh, management they will go with. Mm -hmm. uh, will they go with the tra traditional one, mm -hmm. with combined with beam or mm -hmm. uh, or um, IPD integrated mm -hmm. project delivery mm -hmm. or they, they need to decide what they want to do mm -hmm. on this workshop and mm -hmm. then go forward. Sure. So, um, of course, it's a reflect. It's not really reflect on our current uh, workplace or employment at work, how we work. But in gen, we're talking about general state, uh, yeah. like general yeah. cases, right? All right. So um, let's move on. Next question. Um, what is your perspective on BIM in our industry? Well, uh, the BIM exists before I were born. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it started from 1970s mm -hmm. and was officially accepted on early uh, uh, 2000s. Mm -hmm. So I think the BIM development is really slow, but mm -hmm. in the last few years, uh, it, it just uh, sped up a little. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the technology uh, and the uh, process of BIM and the BIM tools mm -hmm. uh, are now catching up to each other, mm -hmm. and I think now it is it it it, it becomes a better tool and process for for companies to use. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, some com companies accept it, some don't. Uh, so I think. Uh, uh, we need to we need to see the bigger picture and um, uh, we need to have support from government mm -hmm. and to in order to implement beam successfully into our organizations because some some countries uh, do have and some does not have uh, mandatory beam mm -hmm. uh, beam uh, projects mm -hmm. uh, and uh, i think the the countries that have that support from the uh, government. Mm -hmm. They are really, really um, developed. If you, for example, compare UK to Croatia, mm -hmm. uh, Croatia is years away, mm -hmm. maybe decades mm -hmm. uh, from but BIM development. So that could be your task in the future, I guess. Um, but European Union, uh, so okay, UK is now in, not in, but in, European Union in general has another scheme, maybe from yeah. smart or yeah, I think. But it should be from government level. You are right because yes, every yes. every regional regional area has different condition and different uh, planning uh, standard and norms. So probably, yeah, it's definitely for has to be. Uh, uh, defined by governmental level for sure. Um, yeah, that's the difficult part. Many um, organization or perhaps uh, private uh, BIM consulting offices, 
they defining all this sort of standard for uh, the private companies. Yeah, there are, there are so many standards that standard is not even standard anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, let's say one A uh, BIM consultant company defined, I don't know, level of development according to ROG, ROE, you know, level of information, yeah. level of geometry, level of coordination, blah, 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 etc. But this doesn't mean much because it's not defined by official governmental level. And yeah, in... yeah. I think I think because I'm studying in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. they have really good mm -hmm. support from government, and mm -hmm. the government is um, they have standards, mm -hmm. and you have PAS 1192, you have ISO mm -hmm. standards. Mm -hmm. uh, 19650 mm -hmm. which are good mm -hmm. maybe a little quite maybe a little uh, harder to understand but mm -hmm. when you go through them it, it, it takes a little time to mm -hmm. to to see what they wanted to say mm -hmm. but uh, in the end they do uh, do have uh, a great support from the government mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to croatia Mm -hmm. uh, where you have only one document mm -hmm. or few documents about the BIM and yeah. that's it. And yeah. it's mostly architectural and structural. So mm -hmm. there is no BIM in Croatia for MIP mm -hmm. disciplines. So. I think this is in general problem in every uh, all of the world. MIP part is kind of um, still hidden gem that many discipline. Yeah. Myself also when I'm working in our industry, industry i care a lot about architectural aesthetics and plannings and as well as structural planning but when it comes to mep it's a little bit of lack of um, uh, um knowledge from our side like we just only know how the system should go but we don't know the detail how it building analyzed and you know or how these all pipe systems and flows going to be calculated so this, um, I think this should be also somehow supported from education, like yeah, I agree. academic background that um, um, the, the, this detached uh, educational system from the other discipline, um, it make, it cause same problem in, in professional world. So I think some point, the university level also should implement this sort of integrated um, 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 design process. Uh, yes, because um, if you start from your study days mm -hmm. uh, to learn about BIM, mm -hmm. um, I think it will be easier for uh, for every organization to implement or adopt BIM mm -hmm. because you already know about BIM, you know the benefits that could uh, mm -hmm. be extracted from BIM. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think more and more people that are educated mm -hmm. in, in this field, uh, mm -hmm. it will make easier uh, mm -hmm. for organizations to implement it or governments to implement sure. it. Sure. I mean, the, the the big difference between intelligence and education is that, I mean, people in general are very intelligent, but um, the education should support the right direction for the intelligent people, right? <laughs> I think. Yeah, it should so, guide them. So we should we should talk about now a little bit about university. So when I was at university student, I never had like proper BIM uh, course at university even bachelor or master doesn't matter uh, in architecture school. Uh, I guess uh, my university was really uh, focused on design studio and more like a schematic design phase things. Um, but do you think in our industry, students should learn about BIM at university? Yes, yes, definitely yes. Mm. Because uh, as I said earlier, uh, it should be taught from very beginning mm -hmm. in order to help the implementation and adoption of BIM. Mm -hmm. uh, I also didn't have BIM on mechatronics because mm -hmm. in some ways it is not connected, in some mm -hmm. ways it, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, I didn't know I will go to building industry, mm -hmm. but uh, as the time, is, time passed, uh, 
Mm. I I found myself in the uh, construction industry, and mm -hmm. I was I was very interested in BIM, so mm -hmm. that's why I enrolled my master's degree mm -hmm. uh, in BIM management mm -hmm. and integrated digital delivery. Mm -hmm. So, and from from that experience, uh, I'm still finishing it. I need mm -hmm. to write my thesis. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got to I got experience from many professionals in this in that industry mm -hmm. uh, uh, with uh, many backgrounds from lawyers mm -hmm. to consultants to MIP engineers to structural engineers mm -hmm. to architects mm -hmm. um, the people like Noha Salib Tong Yang Mervyn Richards Nick mm -hmm. Nisbet Bill East Dar Darren Fritz um, they those are people who are writing the BIM standards mm -hmm. ISO one one nine six five Mm -hmm. and so on they are reviewing those documents they are implementing them and um, I got experience from uh, real life case studies mm -hmm. uh, from them and all other professionals that came to our classes mm -hmm. uh, so I think yes uh, it should be implemented in mm. uh, in the education system mm. uh, BIM should be implemented yeah. right so your case is very specialized in uh, BIM, BIM uh, workflow that specifically for the master program. But I think yeah. um, this uh, uh, general knowledge or hands-on uh, practice uh, of some software, a little bit of not too much, but general software uh, skills should be implemented in gen uh, in uh, most of uh, university, I think, where, yeah. no, matter what, uh, no matter what disciplines you are involved. All right, so um, now the question is, um, uh, could be tricky because you are you are engineer at the same time BIM manager. Um, if you look around these days, a lot of people, they are BIM manager, right? Um, if you yeah. go LinkedIn, I'm BIM manager, I'm BIM manager. When you go for the meeting, I'm BIM manager, uh, a lot of them. Um, how important BIM manager's role in reality? Do you feel the project team really respect BIM manager's role or position, or is it just a placeholder somebody has to be because of the meeting, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I think for in this, this time, uh, in current times, BIM manager role is important mm -hmm. because it connects the dots and uh, it really guides the, this, uh, the other team members in the right direction, in BIM direction, which they want to do, but they do not know how to do it yet. Uh, but maybe in the future when uh, BIM is integrated with education mm -hmm. and everything, I think that role could be extinct mm -hmm. because if you have project leader who also knows BIM, mm -hmm. do you really need BIM manager? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. If you have the team full of mm -hmm. the people with the knowledge of BIM, mm -hmm. I don't. I think maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. maybe this role will go extinct eventually when mm -hmm. when uh, people learn about BIM. Mm -hmm. But also BIM is. Uh, is constantly evolving mm -hmm. and there are new things mm -hmm. and it is question do the people have time do people have will to learn it mm -hmm. uh, learn constantly in order to mm -hmm. uh, do beam uh, on the daily basis uh, mm -hmm. and do they will they need be managers mm -hmm. uh, to help them or uh, will they go uh, uh, and learn that uh, by mm. themselves. Yes, right. You, you, your point is really important. I think right now, BIM managers has to handle uh, many aspects, management, team management, schedule yeah. management, <laughs> training management, standard management, content management, um, technology yeah, management. You can also... Yeah. Uh, you can also add legal management because, legal. Yeah. It, yeah, because uh, you know, if you, it depends on company, mm -hmm. uh, uh, level of company, and uh, 
I, I would say a level of BIM manager because mm -hmm. if you go on technical side, you have BIM manager who is uh, making models, mm -hmm. who is extracting uh, graphical and non-graphical data mm -hmm. um, and importing in database systems and documentations. They are coordinating technical teams mm -hmm. uh, from various disciplines. Uh, and if you go further, you have maybe operational side where you uh, you need to coordinate operational mm -hmm. teams mm -hmm. uh, that are using those models. Uh, you need to uh, uh, assess costs, budgets, and you need to uh, project time phasing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need to ensure that you have a smooth operation of construction procedures. Right. And if you go on the top level management uh, and strategic uh, BIM management, mm. you need to know how to forecast risks, uh, design mm. protocols and quality assurance. Mm. Um, you need to assess budget. You need to see and review uh, documents uh, from client size. Uh, you need to, that's why I said you need to know all uh, also and the legal part because when you are on the top management, uh, then you, you need to know the, the legal side mm -hmm. also. So yeah. I think these days BIM manager is, uh, how would you say it, a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. He needs to know everything. And if you see um, advertisements for jobs for mm -hmm. BIM manager, they mm -hmm. want they want you to know uh, to, to know it all. You need to know architecture, MIP. You need to know how to program. You need to how you need to know m management. You need to have management skills. You need to uh, do everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. So this um, it's this really is confusing yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And organization needs to uh, say, okay, we want the manager to do this, 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 and uh, clearly define his tasks mm -hmm. uh, because. Um, because uh, it happens that he needs to done it all and it's mm. just not possible to do That's it That's right. And it's different in planning side. Uh, actually, the BIM manager, internal BIM manager becomes BIM coordinator, general yeah. BIM coordinator when it yes. comes to huge project where the client has their own BIM manager, right? Then yes. um, definitely legal point, you have to manage the ownership of model, contract, um, and of yes. course, BIM execution plan, everything EIR, all these documents yes. have to be controlled by BIM coordinator, as well as the BIM manager from client side. So I think it's very complicated job indeed. Um, yeah. so Dynamic. It's very dynamic, dynamic stressful, yeah. stressful. Um, but some point, um, also you have to know the different discipline. So, I mean, um, I guess or if it's big project and big company, then they will propose uh, multiple BIM managers um, for each uh, discipline. discipline. Yeah. yeah, that way it makes more sense to support and balance mm -hmm. each other. Uh, but it's uh, most of case, uh, it's also not very happening because just because you need a um, BIM manager for it, this discipline and they don't have skilled for people and well, they just, they just uh, play, uh, play someone who worked long time as a BIM manager, then it also doesn't make any sense in, in general. It doesn't help for, yeah. yeah. So this is difficult thing in, in practice. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, maybe those people should be called coordinators and the BIM managers is the person who is managing it all. Mm -hmm. So you have, you don't, uh, um, in my opinion, mm. uh, a BIM manager, mm. he needs to know that mm. there is a possibility to do that. Mm. He doesn't need to know how to mm. do it. Mm. It should be more beneficial if he knows how to manage it mm. and he knows who will he appoint to do that, mm. who is, who is uh, who has those skills mm -hmm. and uh, which he needs to do it? So that's right. So I, I mean, this um, he or she or they, right? Depends yeah. on depends yeah. on organization. Um, right. So you think who is the best BIM manager? <laughs> Could be <laughs> who someone who is. Yeah, I, it's a funny question. I wouldn't ask you, <laughs> but well, I think in my opinion, it should be someone who promotes BIM. Yeah. who is on a senior seat mm -hmm. or maybe has a 
a seat in the uh, board of directors, depends mm. on the company, mm. of course. Mm. Uh, he should know, as I said, he should know, um, he doesn't need to know, uh, for example, let's say a Revit, mm. he doesn't need to be a master of a Revit. Mm. He just needs to know that uh, Revit has this possibility to do this. Mm -hmm. And then he needs to know more the, that, uh, the skills of his team. Mm -hmm. If he knows the skills of his team, mm. he can, he can uh, assign every team member for, for his uh, most... Uh, um, uh, how how should I say it? Mm. Uh, be, best position for him yeah. that he, he should uh, know how to assess people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it can be, but most of case uh, in that case, if someone doesn't have um, deep knowledge about software side, it's a very difficult to gaining re respect from BIM coordinators in general because it sounds like uh, the BIM manager becomes a I don't know, BIM, um, you know, assistant or let's say BIM uh, secretary where you're just um, hearing and you know how it should be and then just without knowing deep knowledge of a software side and just ordering to the BIM coordinator. Um, I saw them and this is in general very difficult to get uh, respect from BIM coordinators. And as well as you, when, let's go, you go BIM kick off meeting um, with clients and different discipline involved. And then when they ask specific detailed questions and they say, oh, I should ask to my BIM coordinator, that doesn't, you know, it, it somehow- it Oh, is... uh, I wanted to say he needs to know that there is this possibility and mm. then he has a, a employee that has that skill. He mm -hmm. just needs to know that mm -hmm. because BIM manager as the uh, last word says he needs to manage mm -hmm. and uh, i think if b manager is um, involved in content creating mm -hmm. modeling mm -hmm. and everything like that he doesn't he does not have time to mm -hmm. do the management mm -hmm. he is just too deep in the project uh, doing stuff uh, by himself and not by his team if mm -hmm. you if you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sure sure i get it yeah so... because uh, if we talk about the manager that he needs to know uh, fully the software okay mm -hmm. that's that's a good uh, good uh, skill but um, that will also then apply to project leader does mm -hmm. he know everything about mip mm -hmm. no he doesn't mm -hmm. does he know everything about architecture mm -hmm. uh, structural and uh, cost estimation and everything mm -hmm. yeah if you mm -hmm. uh, yeah if you can relate mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. sure sure so this cost estimation is completely another story we can talk about another interview <laughs> uh, it's a huge tema so um right so someone has to be good management skill and the who can assign project team who can build up the team let's say build up the good yes, team. yes. that's the key succeed for as a company as well as that could be the best person who could be beam manager but he, they... he, he should see the bigger picture if he if we're talking about mm -hmm. beam implementation in firm mm -hmm. or adoption mm -hmm. um, he should see the bigger picture and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. um, uh, he needs to implement strategy Mm -hmm. strategies, mm -hmm. workflows, procedures, mm -hmm. uh, training uh, procedures and everything. Yeah, so it's he or she or they, because can yeah. be multiple BIM managers, yes. they, um, they should balance all these things, which is very difficult. So I guess uh, the people who hear from interview, they can imagine because um, this uh, podcast I'm making is not only for people who want to be BIM manager or it's for people who want to hire BIM manager also. So it's very important uh, tema. Uh, I hope we can help them a bit at some point. Yeah. <laughs> right. So next question, Antonio. Um, so I have only two questions left actually. Um, there is, um, I think um, it's generally most of company has the same experience. So we have senior position, project manager, as you said, or project leader, group leader, etc. They have uh, years of decades of experience in planning side or, or execution side. And, but they don't have 
current technological knowledge, right? It's difficult to catch up everything every day. Is this dynamic uh, yeah. de development is impossible. So we'll be at some point in their position, like we cannot catch up every single new things uh, for sure. And the young graduates from university, just out of the university, they are um, very motivated and has energy and has deep software technology skills, let's say BIM skills. Um, and the difficulty is now in both sides, like the seniors trying to mentoring or explaining the detailed part of planning. But of course, juniors uh, lack of knowledge about that experience of that. So it's always crash crashing some point, different opinion. Oh, he's uh, marking up or she is marking up everything with a pen and highlight and then ask me to take picture and to do this. But actually that when you draw in model 3D, it doesn't maybe work or some point. There's always some yeah. sort of difficult um, situation between them. How would you think best way somehow to solve this issue to bridge the gap between young from technolo technological part and old from uh, experience part? Well, I think, first of all, they need to have understanding for each other. Mm -hmm. That is an uh, important part and communication also and education. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say old ones can always learn about new things if they mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, young ones also learning about the, about the discipline they are working in from the mm -hmm. seniors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they can learn from each other mm -hmm. and also... Uh, both of them should take trainings mm -hmm. uh, together maybe and mm -hmm. workshops mm -hmm. in order to show the younger generations the benefits mm -hmm. of their knowledge and mm -hmm. the seniors the the benefits of the new technology mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah, it's also think... could be cultural difference between uh, different continent. Uh, for instance, in yeah, that's I don't, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I don't know in America or maybe my country, back in South Korea, looks like um, the the no matter what position you are, you have to be good for maybe everything. Otherwise, you get easily fired. I don't know <laughs> some point. <laughs> so you have to be good. Otherwise, you cannot uh, survive. But some point in I I I don't know maybe it's my it's again it's my personal opinion maybe in Europe or Central Europe it's more stable when you have permanent job and as time goes um, it's more or less more or less you always just stick in the company you never possibly get fired unless huge uh, dilemma or drama happens so I guess that make a little bit of different culture, I think. And, um, but you're right. Uh, no matter which work culture or environment you are, the important thing is we should res respect each other yes. between junior yes. and senior. And we have to be patient. Um, so, I mean, it's gain, it's both- Try to comprehend their point of view. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. So both gaining uh, different knowledge every day. So as you said, the training is also very important and the, the interest and curio curiosity between um, the each side of lack of uh, knowledge or experience, they each should be balanced. So I think the men mentoring program within the organization is very important. I think. Also yeah, I think it's it could be very beneficial to mm -hmm. both sides. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because otherwise, um, you know, you lose good good newbies, or you you may may lose good senior. So that. That is yeah. the important uh, for organization, I think. Yeah, uh, I think uh, also uh, the organization needs to to do the steps for mm -hmm. them in mm -hmm. order for uh, both sides to start to work with each other and to mm -hmm. understand each other, mm -hmm. to respect each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not only on the personal. Uh, personal level it's also on organizational mm. level they need mm. to give them tools to do that yes right so 
it's um yeah it's it's a every every day every practice um difficulties how they can keep the human resource good human resource and at the end of the day yeah. for for us uh it's more or less human resource rather than hardware or software resource so yeah, yeah. i think that's also very important in succeed in beam uh to keep and to build yeah i agree team. All right. So my last question, Antonio. So it's a bit a little bit sorry for that the interview time a bit uh, beyond. I think when I usually no inter interview with the not familiar people that I usually could match on time, but with friends like you or you know, it goes a little bit yeah. longer time because I have it's more to ask. Yeah, more to ask. Uh, last question, Antonio. So I'm running every day something new. And I would like to enhance my skills of programming like C Sharp or JavaScript. Currently, I'm very interested in JavaScript to make some video games or, you know, like uh, game development, uh, interactive website um, that makes, to me, I, I see here a little bit of future for myself that um, I can bring this sort of knowledge to the building industry. What is your preference? What would you like to learn next couple of years or couple of months, whatever you wish to learn? Uh, well, in my free time, I started mm. to uh, learn uh, brewing a beer. So I'm brewing my own beers now. And <laughs> it's really <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, a, it's totally different from I, what I do. Oh, in I my think it's related many, professional. many mechanical stuff you have to. Yeah, like that's pipe, correct. And piping and heating, and I think many things involved yeah. at some points. <laughs> it's a really strict process, so yeah. I like it, yeah. and it's really calming. Yeah, okay. uh, and from professional side, I'm really interested in robotics uh, for on-site construction. All right, it really, it's really nice um, field, mm. not developed yet, but it goes in the right directions. There are many robots that can do on-field uh, scanning and everything like that so interesting it's really interesting yeah interesting yeah that's cool so yeah right this um i think um we should somehow try different things out of the uh, professional work then yeah. you can still learn something you can br bring back to the your pro professional life so yes, i really yes. encourage um our industry people to go a little bit beyond out of the desk, maybe to do something completely different thing, then yes. you may can wake up or bring new idea for sure. So once you finish your beer, we can catch up one where after pandemic over, we catch up yes, for, yes, for sure. Your homemade beer. We can beer. go, go te <laughs> uh, taste, te test, taste. Yeah. And I will I will make a couple of varieties of beer and we can taste them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right, Antonio, thank you very much for today's interview. That's all. Thank for you for tonight. inviting me. Uh, it's really great inspiration for everybody who um, are interested in our topics. So thank you. And I wish you have a nice weekend. And you too, you go. Uh, catch up soon once this uh, Corona time is over. Yes, sure. All right. Stay, stay safe and see you. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.